somebody needs to be started back before the end of the day, and that was just an arbitrary thing. And they tried to change it about 20 years ago, and they said it's worked for 300 years. Let's not change it if that's the way it is. All right, now the family tomb normally holds two caskets. You can see this. This is a shelf that goes to the back of the tomb. Down here, there's bars that go across. And from the bars to ground level is an open area. We call it a receiving vault. So the first casket is on the shelf. The second one is on the bars. When the third person dies, the first casket is taken out. It's open. The remains are gathered together. They're placed in a sack. They're placed in the receiving vault. Third person goes there, the fourth person there, the fifth, etc., etc. So a tomb designed to hold two caskets can hold dozens of family members. It's very cost effective, very efficient. A one time expense for a family tomb, and everybody thereafter is buried in it. You can look at some of the tombs, you can see all of the names, look at all of the names that are on here, and if this gets full, They'll put another plaque on the side and they'll start adding names. You can see one over there that has a plaque on the side. And they open just like the front door to your house. You can see the little rosette. They just unscrew that. This comes off. You can see it there. This one here is either broken or something happened to it. Um, we also embalm a little bit differently here, a little more fluid, a little less water for more rapid deterioration. These are like mini crematoriums. Can you imagine how hot it gets in there in the summer? And they're relatively deep. And back in the 17 and 1800s when these cemeteries were built, we used to bury in wooden caskets. Well, what they would do is when they needed the space, they'd just break it up and it would fall back into this area, into the receiving vault. But now with the metal caskets, they don't deteriorate, so they truly have to be opened. The remains of that together, they're placed in the receiving vault. A tomb like this, this is a stucco tomb. This is brick with plaster on top. To build something like this today would probably cost thirty-five dollars or $40,000. But 250 years from now, you're still using it. And the interment fee, which is to put a body in the tomb, costs about $600. And all of that transferring is done before the family gets here. So like every time like somebody dies, when it's like the third person, when they take the casket out, what do they do with that casket? It's discarded. Once a casket has been in the tomb, it's never used again. <laughs> and sometimes these old, old, I mean, this is not... This is not very wide, you know, and caskets now have gotten much larger. So when there's a death in the family, the funeral home says, all right, where's the interment going to be? This cemetery, which tomb, they come out and look at it, and that determines the type of casket you can get. It's got to fit. So sometimes, if it's a very old tomb and not much of a space, you actually rent the casket at the funeral home and you bury in the liner doesn't have to be watertight, doesn't have to be airtight, it doesn't go in the ground. And to build a tomb like this with the marble and the statue and all that kind of stuff, that's an individual preference. I mean, some families spend a tremendous amount of money. A question we get a lot is, what, what about, where do you want, like my husband and I, neither one of our families have tombs, so we're going to be buried in a mausoleum, much like y'all do in other parts of the country. But if both families have a tomb, usually it's stipulated in the will which tomb the person wants to be in, whether the mother wants to be in her family's tomb, the, the father and the other one. And if there's a black sheep in the family, <laughs> the surviving family members decide whether or not he goes in the tomb. Okay? And the fences that you see, um, if the family had a fence around the house that they really liked, they might copy it out here. What you buy is patio furniture, a little couch and two chairs. That started out as cemetery furniture. They would come out and sit and tend to the tombs. You see perpetual care sometimes. A perpetual care fee means it's a one-time expense for the maintenance and upkeep of the tomb, cutting the grass, doing the streets, things like that. And there can be assessments to perpetual care cares from a long time ago. There's a um,
statue of Mother Teresa here on the uh, corner. No, that's that's Mother Teresa's on the other side. Excuse me. That's the the priest that didn't bleed. Um, I'm Presbyterian. <laughs> it was like stigmata, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. The yeah. one that didn't bleed. Okay. Um, can you see that one where grass is growing out of the tomb? If a tomb falls into disrepair, whoever maintains the cemetery, it would be the Archdiocese of New Orleans, because this is a St. Louis cemetery, they'll get in touch with the family and say, you must come out and do something about the tomb. If they can't find a family member, they search for two years. If after two years, still no one has come forward, whoever maintains the cemetery can take it down, gather the remains, rebuild, bury them in an area in the back sell that piece of property to another family to build the tomb. So, it works real good. Yes? Like, do you see, like, statues in front of, like, some of the tombs? Like, and that's an organization. Yeah, the Sisters of the Could, like, a family get a statue of just anything they wanted? It? Yes. Well, it has to be okay by, you know, the people who maintain the cemetery. You can't put an obscene or a vulgar thing out. It has to be in keeping with the cemetery. And we don't have a lot of um, stealing of the artifacts in the cemetery because we have a lot of voodooism in our culture here. <laughs> and they cast spells on you if you do bad things. In fact, they're going to hire a voodoo priestess to try and work on the Pelicans, our basketball team, because their hair was in the newspaper yesterday try and work on our team so they won't have so many injuries. And we still have voodoo rituals and we have voodoo shops in New Orleans. And you ladies, we have a lot of, um, you know, neighborhood type beauty shops. And if you go to one of those usually and get a haircut and a manicure, you keep your hair clippings, you keep your cuticles. Because those are two things that they need to cast spells on people. So you'll see them come in with their little towels and bring them wonderful. It's awesome. Okay. Anybody have any more questions? You understand how it works? And they must keep a certain amount. Some of these places are, were sold to people, but they must keep a certain amount available for the owners of the tombs. And nobody asked this question. I'm surprised. What happens if, there, if there's an automobile accident and five people die? Oh, wow. Two go in the tomb. Three go back there for a year and a day. After a year and a day, two more come. And after another year and a day, the fifth one will come. So it would take two years and two days to get all five. If all of the family were cremated, could they just be cremated? Yes. The Catholic Church didn't allow cremation until the 1970s, the Second Vatican Council. So now there's a lot of cremation. And in fact, we'll walk to the other side for a minute. They just built one that has the little bitty places for the urns. But if you have a family too, when you cremate, you can place the urns on the shelf or even in the receiving room. Okay?